Hi, I'm Jen with Pepper Harrow, and we're here today to learn how to make a seasonal wreath. Uh, in particular, we're making a fall wreath with ingredients that we have dried here on our farm and a homemade grapevine wreath that we made out of some wild grapevine that we had growing. This is an oblong shape. shape. You can tell it's not completely a, a, a perfect circle. It's oblong, uh, but I like the shape because it's gonna make an interesting wreath, one that's going to be really beautiful with some of the elements that we're using today. So we have our wreath form, we have some wire, I have a pair of scissors, a pair of uh, handy dandy snips that I'm gonna be using to cut a few of the things that we're using today, and all the special dried and some fresh ingredients. So I pre-made some of my bundles that we're going to uh, use in our wreath today, just so we can make sure we kind of get through it quickly. Uh, but some of the things I'm using here are evergreen. Uh, the evergreen is Arborvita, and I love the smell of Arborvita, and it dries amazingly. Uh, I have some pompous grass. I also have some celosia, ladies mantle, uh, and some other elements too. I actually threw in some lavender and sweet annie. All of these are awesome dried ingredients that we spent drying throughout the, the summer months. And now we're the fruit of our labors here. We're gonna be able to use these in our, our seasonal wreath. Oh, and there is some dried marigolds too. So you'll see some of these as we get to going with our wreath. Uh, but my first bundle, I've taken these and I've made little bundles out to the side. This is the first bundle I'm gonna use. And I like how this pompous grass is kind of acting as like a focal point. And you can see I've made it into a fan shape. So I'm gonna take my fan shape bundle and I'm gonna start by kind of setting it a little higher up on the top of the wreath. I'm not gonna fill the entire wreath, I'm gonna make a half wreath. So I'm gonna maybe make it more crescent shaped, if you can imagine that in your mind before we get started here. So I'm gonna place my first bundle on and I'm gonna take my wire and I'm gonna hold my bundle in place and I'm gonna wrap the wire around my bundle. Same. It's better to get around uh, your bundle the first time without pulling. I pulled too early and it kind of started slipping out. So I'm gonna place my bundle on and wrap around two or three times around my bundle to make sure that it is held in place. Okay, it's now in place. I have my first bundle placed on my wreath. I'm gonna set it down here. It's a little crooked, so I'm gonna adjust it just a little tiny bit. I want it to face forward and it was kind of leaning back a little. Okay, so I'm leaving my uh, wire on the outside. You can see here, and I'm gonna bring it in for my next bundle that we're gonna set on. I have my next bundle here, all prepared and ready to go. And I'm gonna place that on top of the, the, fall, the first bundle that I laid, kind of laying it like shingles on a roof. So I'm laying this guy on, and I'm just gonna take a quick look and see how it looks. It looks really pretty. If you're missing anything at this point, you can go add in additional ingredients, but I like the way it looks, so I'm not gonna add anything in. And I'm gonna bring my wire and secure it in place. And I did that a couple times. Uh, I'm not gonna go around that third time. That's okay, it's in place, it's not going anywhere. Okay, now I'm ready for my third bundle. And this guy had a little less pompous grass and a little bit more dried look to it, which is fine. I'm just gonna place it and see how it looks. I'm gonna add a little bit more of the pompous grass and I have it sitting on the side here. Best to have emergency supplies in hand just in case you wanna change anything up. I'm gonna place it on the bottom so that it's not too distracting. Uh, it's very feathery and very textural and it can kind of detract from what you're trying to achieve with your, your wreath. So I have that in place. I'm gonna keep going, secure it in place. Okay, perfect. Trimming off a few of my little dried tails on the end here. I'm gonna keep this on the outside. I'm gonna put my fourth bundle in. I'm gonna go with something a little bit bushier. Here we go. All right, secure this. Okay. 
Okay. Go for my fifth bundle. This has a little bit of, bit of the lavender in it, which is smelling amazing. Uh, the sweet Annie mixed with um, the sweet Annie mixed with the lavender it smells incredible, and then the Arbor Vita smells so good. Okay. Okay. Now at this point, I have my bundles laid. They're all going one way, but I know I want to end up putting a ribbon in place in one little section and I kind of want to go a different direction. So you've seen I've gone this way the whole time counterclockwise. And now I want to take my last two bundles and I want to do them uh, clockwise. So, but I'm not going to start up here. I'm going to start nearest where I've been laying my counterclockwise bundles. So I'm going to place my next bundle. I'm going to take this and I'm going to place it opposite. So I'm going like this. And again, this is where my ribbon's going to go. So I'm doing it opposite. The pompous grass is a little, crazy there so I'm going to set some off to the side and I don't know you guys I keep saying pompous grass but I feel so, a little silly saying it I've been calling it pampas grass I know everybody calls it pompous grass but I'm like is it pompous I don't know so um, you know maybe one of those potato potato moments all right <laughs> so I have that set uh, and I'm also going to tuck in a few I had some special ingredients off the side uh, these are river oats and I'm obsessed with them. These come up as a perennial in my garden and you see how delicate and beautiful they are. I think this is going to make like the perfect little embellishment for the center of this fall wreath. You saw I did not incorporate it in any of the other bundles that I put in place, but while I'm going to put this uh, clockwise bundle in, I'm going to use this as an opportunity to kind of make this a focal point for my wreath. and. Yeah, it's not everywhere. It's just going to be right in this very special spot. So I'm going to place these in and I put some going up and some going or some going uh, counterclockwise, some some going going clockwise. Um, I'm going to put them in and see what they look like. Yeah, they're so beautiful. They're not going to behave themselves. So I'm going to put in maybe one bundle at a time. So I'm, I am at the same time putting in my clockwise bundle, just to call that out. So I'm putting that in right now. And I'm gonna go ahead and put the rest of my river oats over there. Going that way. I'm gonna make them a little bit lower because they're gonna be nearer to um, where I have my bow. And I set some on the outside and some on the inside. So they're kind of going some different directions here to give the wreath some depth and to make sure that they don't get lost in those bundles that I laid. Okay. All right. I'm going to put in my last bundle here. And again, it's going to go clockwise. I'm going to kind of tuck it in. Um, I should have maybe laid this one and then done the other one on top of it coming inward, but that's okay. I'll work around it. I'm just gonna have to maybe be a little bit more careful that I don't ruin my little bundle here. Okay. Okay, so that's in place. And now, because I did it a little wrong, I'm gonna go and take it behind that first bundle. So I'm in between. I'm going behind that, that bundle that I just laid down, adding this new one in, um, and I'm just gonna have to weave in between the two. That works, it's doable. Okay, and instead of taking it that twice, I just did it once because it's pretty tight right now. It's looking amazing. Oh yeah, I love it. Uh, okay, so the last thing I'm gonna do is Maybe not have Adam catch me using my snips to cut my wire. <laughs> I just cut them. I just cut it. Okay, so I cut my wire in the back and I have my little piece of wire. I'm just going to take that and tuck it in here and wind it around, making sure that the pokey end is facing inward so that it doesn't, you know, hurt the door or wherever I end up hanging my wreath. So I'm just going to push it into the, I, I twist tied it around the uh, grapevine and then just tucked it in so that it's secure. Um, this is what the wreath looks like finished. 
Uh, and now I'm gonna go put a bow on so that it kind of anchors this and hides kind of the spot where you can tell that I've put my wire. So the last thing we're gonna do is put a bow on and then we're gonna have a beautiful uh, finished wreath for our front door or wherever you deem is a good spot to hang your seasonal wreath. Okay, so the last thing I'm gonna do is go put that bow on and <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but I'm a sucker for double-sided double, double -sided satin ribbon, and uh, especially burgundy. I am obsessed with burgundy. I really love it. So I'm not gonna do like a huge blinged out bow. This is like a simple country dried flower wreath. So therefore I'm gonna use something a little bit more simple. Satin, I view it as like being very upscale and rich looking. And I think that contrasted with this very simple uh, design that we've done on this simple grapevine wreath. It will be a nice high contrast. So I have my satin ribbon and I'm gonna trim that with my good, my good ribbon scissors. These only are for ribbon. I don't use them for anything else. That's like pretty rare for me. I usually like whatever's like laying around I use, but those are my ribbon scissors. And actually, I'm gonna cut this a little bit longer. I want it to be long and beautiful. Okay, so I don't know. I maybe, maybe this is about three feet. And all I'm gonna do is take it and make a little bow, a very simple bow. Or actually, I'm gonna take it and just do a double knot because I think that would look simple and beautiful. This is our finished seasonal wreath made from uh, dried flowers and greenery on the farm, as well as a homemade, handmade grapevine wreath form. So you see how simple it is, and you can just take this and make something as simple as this for yourself to enjoy for the fall. You can take this and make a little bit more Christmassy design and do something for the holidays. It's simple to create little pops of beauty to add to any home. Thanks for joining and I hope you guys enjoyed this little tutorial.